let's start off with what, what exactly is a headache? What is it? Headache, in, in its simplest form, is head pain. I mean, we uh, can call it different things. We like to put fancy names on it, like cephalgia, right? But it just means a headache. Mm -hmm. um, and the headaches can come in a be different phenomenon, right? We can have throbbing headaches, and we can have aching headaches, and we can have sharp pain headaches. And a lot of times it a, has a vascular component, so a blood supply thing, either too much or too little blood. That's a problem, um, and that can be mediated by a lot of different things. There's also very serious versions of headaches, so really a headache uh, is always treated serious until proven otherwise. Okay, well, what types, different kinds of headaches? I I've heard of uh, cluster headaches and migraines. And can you kind of walk us through that and kind of tell us what the differences are? Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. There's cluster headaches, there's migraine headaches, there's tension headaches, there's sinus headaches, there's a lot of different types of headaches that are the collection of symptoms and how they present, but the causes underlying those headaches are probably the more important thing to understand than what the name is. So how Corey was mentioning, you could have too much, like with the migraine, you could have too much blood or too little blood causing that migraine. It could be a hormone problem. It could just be a really, really bad tension type of headache that is just coming very consistently. So it's a matter of understanding, is there a musculoskeletal component of it? Is it more of an organic concern? And getting down to that why of where the headache is truly coming from. Sure. I mean, for, for us as practitioners, history tells us a lot. And just sitting and really listening to someone's story can kind of identify that. So you mentioned cluster headache. Cluster headache we see in usually older uh, men or middle-aged men, uh, that's gonna be more common. Whereas if a, a woman has a, a similar issue and it's like a got sort of a, a global or a geographic kind of head pain, um, that's gonna be less common in say a, a young reproductive age woman. Uh, so we, it, we can kind of categorize them based on who's actually having the pain too. Okay, uh, are, are there other things that are happening in the body that can cause headaches like, you know, spinal injury, uh, sleeping wrong, what are some of the other things? Yeah, I mean, the, the great thing and the horrible thing is that having a headache is sort of just the very first thing that we know. It's a named component of it, um, but hormone imbalance is actually a very common issue. So we think about, think about like a, a woman in her, her menstrual years, her reproductive age years, and she has headaches either premenstrually or maybe during her menstrual cycle or maybe right afterwards. Or there's pregnancy headache, definitely hormone related. And then there's women who are perimenopausal and entering that transition phase. They can get headaches for a little bit different reason. That's more of an instability of hormones rather than a frank uh, excess or loss, whereas postmenopausal women might get headaches because of a, a lack of production of hormones. So it's literally like the body just craves that balance, mm -hmm. and when it doesn't get it, that's it's going to send a signal. And oftentimes, I mean, this, the head is such a uh, sensitive structure, and uh, not just the, it's got, we have thin skin there, we have kind of big blood vessels there, we have really tiny muscles uh, going up to the neck, uh, into the head, and so all those really intricate structures, they're just, it's like a, a tipping point kind of area, and so when a signal has to be rung, it shows up there oftentimes. So, so hormones is just one of them, but uh, we can also see things like hydration, even excess hydration can be a problem, but usually poor hydration is a, a major cause of headaches. Um, too much activity, if you, some people will go out and they'll do a hard run or maybe they'll hit a heavy bag for a while and they'll get a headache from that, but some people get a headache from being sedentary or inactivity, too much couch time. Mm. And definitely with the postural related things like sleeping posture, you see people sleeping whatever way they can get to sleep, and sometimes it's just putting, laying down on your stomach with your head like this all night. Well, you know, some of those muscles are gonna fight back, and by the time you wanna move them in the morning, some are gonna be shortened and in spasm, and some are gonna be lengthened and not wanting to contract appropriately. Mm -hmm. So it's all components there. Injuries, like car accident, whiplash injuries are very common. Well, you know, something in the body needs to stabilize those ligaments that were damaged in the injury and many times that's going to be muscles trying to do it so it's a matter of looking at it understanding where the injury came from what tissues were damaged how to protect those tissues while providing some relief while the body providing relief and helping the body to heal along the way when it's 
more due to musculoskeletal injury. Gotcha. So you were talking about tension headaches. Is that the same as a stress headache or are those two different things? Or is there such a thing as a stress headache? Yeah, there's definitely a, a thing as a stress headache. Um, you can Stress can cause a, any number of things, but usually when people are stressed, people say they, they carry their stress in their shoulders. Um, it really is ends up being a, a stress or a tension headache. There's little, uh, actually very large muscles that kind of lead all the way up through here, and uh, those can be actually inhibited during stress, and you actually will lift your shoulders up like a shoulder shrug, but there's little tiny muscles that are overworking that are right above the scapula, so right in the shoulder blade. When those are overworking, those are a common source of what we call trigger points, and some of those trigger points can be tension headaches, but ultimately the cause of that tension headache was stress or excess, you know, mental, emotional, social type uh, environmental stresses. Absolutely. Well, excellent. I'm glad you mentioned that because that was the next question. What are some of those triggers that we could possibly avoid if we can? You know, what are, what are some of those triggers? Well, stress, how Corey had mentioned, the mental, social, emotional types of things. They can come from everywhere, from you're driving your car, you're stuck in traffic, and you're the person who's just on the horn honking, hurry up, hurry up, or you're the person in the car singing with the radio. It's a lot in perception mm -hmm. is, a, is a really um, healthy way to mitigate some of those daily kind of social stresses um, that we're exposed to because they're going to be there. Like We're all busier than we'd like to be. We're doing more things that we'd like to, probably not sleeping enough. Sleep, not getting enough is a major stressor, so getting enough of that. But even underlying like internal stressors, like such as too much inflammation within the body or a uh, chronic underlying, like real low-grade infection. Those are stressors on the body. The body is perceiving it all as stress, whether it's me in traffic, or I have an infection, and the body needs to deal with that. Mm -hmm. That reminds me of, uh, so Hans Selye is really regarded as sort of the, the godfather of, of stress in medicine, and in the 60s, he really did some nice experiments on the, the effects of stress, no matter what they are, kind of have the same physiologic consequences. We see like involution of the thymus, which affects our immune system. We see uh, effects to our adrenal glands, which affects our stress response. We also see things like uh, pancreatic problems, so blood sugar dysregulation issues and digestion. I kind of joke that you can't run away from a bear in the woods and digest a cheeseburger at the same time. Um, so it's, uh, it does play into all these different things. But even during when uh, Dr. Sellier was putting together his work, he had kind of critics and they're like, so what is this stress thing? Because stress was of course stolen from physics and applied to human mm. physiology. And some people will said, well, it's the, it's the thing that comes at you. The thing coming at you is, is stress. And um, other people would say, no, 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 it's your response to stress. So when we talk about stress, we are usually trying to be pretty clear about, is it the stressor or the stress response? Mm -hmm. And so I just like to make sure that we, we understand that we all have stressors. Some of us have more than others, but we are all ability, we all have our own ability to choose how we respond to those stresses. Like you said, mm -hmm. singing or be mad in the car. <laughs> Ah, that's excellent. So uh, with that, and I'm glad you brought that bear in the woods uh, analogy up, uh, can a person's diet affect uh, the, the headaches? Oh, d definitely. It's how we mentioned that stress affecting pancreatic function, which ultimately can affect blood sugar regulation. Well, if you have a diet that's impacting blood sugar quite a bit and that's going to stress the system. The system trying to deal with that, then it all of a sudden won't be able to, hypothalamus taking in that information of how to digest of the increased sugar in the bloodstream, sending signals to push that into a cell um, through releasing insulin from, um, releasing insulin to push it into the cells. And that's not going to work. And ultimately, the impacts of that food in your body can have very positive effects or very, very negative effects. Yeah, I think right off the top of our heads, we things like there's triggers. Some people don't handle nightshade uh, foods well. Things like tomatoes are a nightshade, and um, uh, some people just don't handle those well. It's a common trigger for other autoimmune type diseases too, like rheumatoid arthritis. And so sometimes we suggest let's just get rid of those. And some foods are high in what we call tryptamines, and uh, we we can kind of avoid those. And then there's big time like food sensitivities, like there's gluten sensitivity, which has become it, uh, there's a good 
popular awareness about gluten sensitivity, definitely an opportunity to cause headaches with that. Actually, dairy, it's like sacrilegious to talk about this in Wisconsin, but, <laughs> you know, dairy, um, there's, there's two major proteins in dairy, casein and whey, and, and they turn into um, caseomorphins and, uh, and we can see some like addictive, like opioid type activity, like morphine. Yes, I'm addicted to cheese. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and we get withdrawal. Like the addiction is, is real and you, if you, so sometimes people say, well, I, I took, I ate cheese or I ate milk and I was fine. Well, well, what if you take it away? Do you still feel fine? Or do you have those withdrawal headaches? I mean, caffeine withdrawal is a phenomenon, right? right, right. If, if I don't have my coffee on the hour, every hour in an IV drip, I'm going to have a headache. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But um, it's, it's sometimes it's close to that. Um, we find those foods to be a, a little bit bigger deal than um, than we probably admit to. You mentioned uh, some bits and pieces. I like to talk about that hypoglycemia. When you when we work with people who have diabetes, um, most of them who are monitoring their sugars very well and they're doing a good job of controlling their diabetes will take a really high glucose, a, a 250 or, or higher glucose every once in a while, 10 times rather than having one event of hypoglycemia. When your blood sugar gets really low, not only do you get headaches, but you feel like you have the flu that just won't quit. You feel like you're maybe you're kind of out of it. You're sort of spacey. Nobody wants really low blood sugar. And this event can happen in, in relatively healthy people that sort of do um, unhealthy activities. Uh, I'm reminded of people who uh, maybe have too much celebration one evening and the next day they have this bad headache. Well, there's a couple reasons for a a hangover headache, right? You have that dehydration because now the liver needs all the water, so it's shunting it away from other important tissues, including the brain. And then we also have um, this like low blood sugar because alcohol turns into sugar in the body, and so it does that insulin thing. And now we have all this insulin, and it drives the sugar way, way down, and we end up actually with low blood sugar. So sometimes the best thing for those after events is just maybe a little bit of carbohydrate or something to bring that up in a reasonable way. Such as? Such as, well, I hate to be put on the spot, but I will. <laughs> um, you know, usually like a, 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 good, a good fat meal, I think about like eggs and uh, if you're a meat eater, things like bacon and sausage, actually a really hearty breakfast, maybe even a little bit of hash browns. I'm not a big fan of the processed carbohydrates, but not a bad idea. If I could, I would say that one of the better things is like a sweet potato or something like that, a root vegetable, um, but I don't see people going after beets and turnips in the morning after that sort of event. And the Waffle House does not Waffle serve. House is, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, so some tips. Give us some tips on how to uh, uh, keep the body in position to fight off headaches or stress or anything that you guys do personally, or what are you recommending to your clients? Um, well, and to kind of in specific relation to headaches and with that even bringing in the stress component a little bit, it's kind of just those overall healthy living foundational pieces of advice. It's eating balanced for what your body needs. Like it's not a matter of choosing to choosing the food pattern that you want. There's so many diets out there. You just recently went over what, about a hundred di yeah. named different diets? We evaluated a hundred different dietary theories and looked at what's actually different. You know, this author is talking about this and this author is talking about this and this, you know, TV show talked about this. What's the best dietary theory and after evaluating a hundred different named dietary theories I came to the conclusion that there's really only the changes of fats, carbohydrates, and proteins in different ratios and all of them have not all of them. Some of them have pretty good evidence to support that use, but it is really an individualized approach. Uh, some people's constitutions just do a little bit better with one approach or the other. And the other thing is just timing of food. Some people need to eat six times a day. Some people would do terribly. They'd gain weight, get headaches, and be in pain all the time if they ate like that. Um, for the average person, I would say that activity and maintaining good activity is uh, a minimum standard. So the American College of Sports Medicine suggests 150 minutes of activity, just general uh, movement every week. 150 minutes. We can all do that. That's 30 minutes a day. No problem. We can, we can knock that out of just doing normal stuff. But headaches in particular, one of the things that I find is eye strain. We spend so much time on our, on our, our uh, devices. Mm -hmm. Yep. Tech neck, right? <laughs> and uh, all that kind of stuff. And we actually had a, a patient that was, uh, she 
had really bad headaches, younger, younger gal, and she actually was falling downstairs, like tripping downstairs. And we're like, to, this to the tune be... of a couple times a week. Yeah, really? like this is not right. So what, let's make a referral. We need somebody else to be looking at this, evaluate this further, maybe some imaging. Well, she got glasses, changed her visual acuity, didn't fall down the stairs anymore, and her headaches went away. Wow. So, okay. I mean, eye strain is a, is a well-known thing. And working in offices under fluorescent lights, that all changes things with the new screens being more blue light emitting. That's a little bit more of a problem than the old tube TVs that had more of a red light emission. So little things like that can change. And then we mentioned sleep a lot. We talk about sleep a lot, getting good, healthy sleep, not just the position of sleep, but the right amount at the right time and the right you know circumstance. Circadian rhythm, poor circadian rhythm, not going to sleep at the right time, not waking up at the right time is maybe as important as the number of hours. Excellent. So be active, yeah. eat well, and get your rest. That's right. All right. Much. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. I want to thank you both for taking the time out of your busy schedules today to come and be on the show.